Welcome back. We're still in lesson four. This is video F. Again, I'm Joe Cooper Sannon. The main point of this video is now that we're familiar with the mean, we're familiar with the standard deviation, what I'd like to do is sort of invent a few data sets that have some characteristics. So for this example of this video, uh, our task is to cook up a data set with each of the following characteristics. One thing to keep in mind, the answers that I'll give on the video are, are not the only answers. It's probably a good idea to think of the ideas and on your own try to come up with an alternative solution. For each one there are an infinite number of answers. Okay, part A. Let's come up with a data set with eight values and we want the mean to be way bigger than the standard deviation. And way bigger is a very generic term, but basically what we need is we need some large values so that the mean is big, but they need to be tightly packed together. So if I flip the slide, I do have this graph to help us visualize this. Here's a dot plot, seems to be centered at about 100, and I've got some data points here at, at 101, 102, 103, 104, um, a few below 100, 99, 98, 97, 96. The mean of these data points will actually be 100, so I guess that's big. And the standard deviation, it, it's like the average distance to the mean. These numbers are very close to 100. Okay, so let me write the data set out um, as numbers, what I came up with. I've got, what, I've got a 96. 97, 98, 99, I skipped 100, and then I've got 101, 102, 103, 104. If you need to use the calculator to figure out that mean, no problem. It's 100. You can trust me. I've sort of balanced it, centered it around 100. So for this data set, y bar is 100. If I asked you in class, if I said, guess the standard deviation, I, I hope you would say something around one or two. Um, all the data points are about one or two away from the mean. If you said 10,000, you're off the mark. S turns out to be, I won't do the formula here, I'll just tell you what the answer is. It is 2.93. So we're centered at 100 for our mean, and I guess that's way bigger than the standard deviation which is 2.3. All right, that was A, we'll move on to B. Next one, B, come up with six values where the standard deviation is way bigger than the mean. So let's think about that. I guess I need lots of spread, so the standard deviation is big, and somehow I need to get the mean to be a small number you could fiddle around with trial and error on this one with a bunch of different numbers. One trick on this is maybe throw in a negative number. If you put a negative number in the data set, uh, that will pull the mean down close to zero if you make the negative number big enough. So let me give you a, a picture of what I came up with. I threw one data point here at, at negative 5,000. Nothing says we can't have negative data. And I threw the other five way up here at at 1,000. So the data set that I have, here's the numbers. I've got negative 5,000 and then five one thousands. One, two, three. Whoops. I think that will work if that is a 10,000, but let me get that out of there just for clarity here. Get this eraser. Yep. Okay, so negative 5,000 and then 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, and 1,000. Remember how to calculate the mean. We add up all the data values and divide by 6 in this case. Uh, negative 5,000 plus 5 1,000s, the mean turns out to be 0. I guess the board's not working. We're going to switch over to the old-fashioned marker here. Uh, disregard the students permanently in the internet. Uh, 
The mean turns out to be zero, right? Negative 5,000 plus five of those 1,000s. Standard deviation is like the average distance to the mean. If my mean is here, I've got five values that are 1,000 away, and I've got one value that's 5,000 away in the negative direction, clearly that's going to be a, a large distance, and I'll tell you that that answer is 2449. So, standard deviation, 2,449, and we've met the requirements here. Standard deviation, definitely way bigger than the mean. One note on this one, and then we'll move on to C. If you keep all of your numbers positive, it's, it's possible to do this, but you really have to fiddle around with the values. It's sort of tricky to get uh, a mean bigger than the standard deviation. Everything gets squeezed real close to zero uh, in that case. All right, we'll move on to C here. Clean up the board. Letter C, standard deviation equal to zero, and we want five data values. It's probably the easiest one out of all of uh, our examples here. No spread. Standard deviation equal to zero means no spread. So all of the, the data values just have to be the same. Essentially, pick your lucky number. I picked 17 as my number. Here's the data set. I've got five values. They're all 17. If you wrote down the data set, whoops, well, there. The standard deviation will end up being zero. Uh, the data set, 17, 17. All the numbers are the same. There's, there's no spread in the data set. I hope you could calculate the mean of this data set without a TI calculator. It's 17. All right, part D, moving along here. Come up with the data sets. Nine values this time. IQR is equal to zero. Standard deviation bigger than 10. I think this showed up on a midterm last summer, and a lot of the students had trouble with this one. Remember what IQR is. I'm taking the distance between the first and third quartile. Okay, so. If I come up with my data set and I organize my values from smallest up to the largest, first quartile, 25% of the way up, third quartile, 75% of the way up, IQR is that distance. I need to make it equal to zero. So what we're saying is all of the data values in the middle of the data set are going to need to be the same. Okay. To make the standard deviation bigger than 10, I guess the trick is throw in an outlier on one end or the other. If you have one value that's far away from the mean, it'll crank the standard deviation up. Okay, so here's what I came up with. Sort of a weird data set. I couldn't even imagine a scenario where you'd collect data like this. But I've got, I put eight values at zero. So I've got eight zeros down here. And to crank the standard deviation up, make it bigger than 10, Guessing this is 900 here. Uh, let me check my notes just to make sure. Yep, okay. So the data set I came up with, 0, 0, 0, 0. So I put eight zeros down here, and then my big outlier turned out to be 900. And we should meet the requirements here. IQR equal to 0. Somewhere in here is Q1. Somewhere in here is Q3. And remember what IQR is. It's that distance between the two, Q3 minus Q1. That distance is zero because all of the data values are the same. So yes, with this data set, IQR will be zero. Standard deviation is like the average distance to the mean. I know why I picked 900, because 900, if I add them up, divided by 9, the mean here is 100. Makes sense now. The mean of this data set's right here at 100, and the average distance to the mean is going to be way bigger than 10, right? All of these are 100 away. The 900 down there is, is 800 away. In my head, I have no idea what this is, but I wrote it down. Uh, standard deviation is 300 on the dot. 
So on average, the data points are 300 units away from the mean, but IQR is equal to zero because in the center, all these numbers are the same. All right, and again, try to come up with, with one on your own. This is certainly not the only answer. D, and we've got one more, is gonna be letter E. Ten values this time. I want the mean to be negative. Oh boy. I want the median equal to the third quartile, equal to the maximum, and all of those are positive. So our mean is a negative number, but the median is the same as the third quartile, is the same as the maximum, are all positive. All right, so if we think this through a bit. If I organize my data smallest up to largest, all of the values from the middle up to the maximum have to be the same value because I have my median equal to the third quartile equal to the maximum, okay? And for the mean to be negative, the, the easy way to make a mean negative is just throw a huge negative outlier. The huge outlier will pull the mean down. Uh, because these are all positive, whatever number I choose for my upper half of my data set has to be positive to meet this requirement. And let's flip the slide and we'll see what I came up with here for the last one. All right, it's 10 data values. Looks like I have a, a bunch of twos down there maybe. Let me take a peek. Oh, they're ones. So a bunch of ones, and this is a negative 29. So if I write the data set down, negative 29, and then those are all ones, there's nine of them. One, two, three, four. Should be nine of them, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ones. I'll be honest with you students, I was trying to make nice round numbers for memes. So if you add these up, we're not calculating, I guess we are calculating the mean. The mean would be negative 29 plus a bunch of ones divided by 10. I'll just tell you what the answer is. It's, it's negative two. That would fall way over here, right? Here's my mean is at negative two. Way down there. I've got this one huge outlier on the negative side. Uh, median equals what? No calculators. It's got to be one, right? It's the middle position. So median on this one is one. The third quartile somewhere in here is also equal to one. The maximum is equal to one. One is positive. We've hit all the bullet points and ta-da, we've got it. All right. So in the past, We've asked students to do these in class on the fly. We've asked on quizzes and, and midterms. So just make sure you've got the ideas. Understand what a mean is, understand the quartiles, standard deviation, IQR, and be able to come up with a data set to meet some characteristics. All right, thanks for watching.